Hi, and welcome to this section of the Pre-Algebra Tutor. Here we're going to learn about how to multiply expressions. And so in the last section we were doing addition and subtraction of expressions that we just had that we were looking for the like terms. I told you over and over again to add or subtract uh, terms, they have to have like terms. In other words, the variables have to match exactly. The exponents of the variables have to match exactly. And then you can add those uh, leading numbers up. Well, here we're going to talk about multiplying expressions. It turns out not really to work quite the same way when you multiply these expressions, but we're going to get there. So before we get into that, I want to recall what we taught you in the last section. Nothing new, but I want you to remember the distributive property. If you have a times b plus c on the inside of a parenthesis, then you distribute the a into each of these terms here. So you would get a times b plus a times c. And that's just called the distributive property. It's something I want you to recall uh, because we're going to use it a lot today. So this is just sort of a review. Also, I want you to recall one more thing because we're going to use it a lot. Remember, when we have two exponents and we multiply them, let's say x squared times uh, x cubed, as long as the base is the same, then when we have two exponents multiplied this, we just add the tops. 2 plus 3 is 5. So basically that's what we're doing. We're adding the exponents. And you can only do that when these guys are multiplied together and if the base is, in other words, the x, the variable, is the same. So that's all we need to remember as far as sort of material that we've already covered in order to fully understand everything in this section. It's very easy to understand how to multiply these guys together when you see some examples. So we're just going to jump into the examples. What if you have x times x? You could sort of think of this as a term multiplied by another little term. How would you do that? Well, kind of gave you the answer just a second ago. These are just uh, exponents, so to speak. They each have an exponent of 1 hanging out there. That's why you don't see them. x times x is x squared. And that's just the definition of the exponent. You can think of it as adding these two exponents up here that are these invisible 1s, giving you 2. That's the answer. Now let me give you something a little more interesting. What if I had 2x times 3x? What would that equal? Well, the way you do this is, when you have everything multiplied together like this, you multiply the numbers. So you have 6, and then x times x is going to give you the x squared. So basically, you're multiplying the number sort of independent of multiplying the, um, the variables there. And uh, that's about all I want to say about that now, because I want to come back and kind of draw a little parallel after I get to the next one. What if I have negative 4x times 6x cubed. How would you handle this? We multiply the numbers. Don't forget your negative signs. You have 6 times 4 is 24. Now what is x times x cubed? That's going to be x to the fourth power because this is x to the first. This is x to the third. According to this rule, we just simply add the exponents. Now here's where students start to get a little confused because I've told you over and over again in the last section that you have to have like terms in order to add or subtract. But here, when we're multiplying, you don't have to have like terms. Because the, as long as it's multiplied, um, these guys, these are the same, I, I say that, they have to have the same base in order to add the exponents. But these guys don't match exactly in the terms of what we were talking about before with like terms in order to add them. So if I were trying to add this guy to this guy, couldn't do it. I'd have to sort of sit tight. But I'm not adding them. I'm multiplying them. So I can multiply the 6 times 4, and I can multiply the x times the x cubed. All right, giving me x to the fourth. Because don't forget, x to the fourth is x times x times x times x. Here I have x times x times x times x, and that's why it's equivalent. So you're going to have to get used to looking at that. When you see things multiplied together, multiply the numbers, multiply everything else. Here we have the same base, so I can just simply add these exponents together. Let's keep going, and I think you'll, you'll get the hang of this. Negative 4x to the fifth times x to the seventh. So we multiply the numbers, 4 times 1 here is just going to give us 4. Now we have exponents with the same base, so we multiply them by adding these exponents. 7 plus 5 is 12, negative 4x to the 12th power. So multiply the numbers, multiply everything else. If you have some exponents that are hanging out with the same base, you can add these exponents together. What if I had something a little more complicated, 3x plus, actually let's make it 3x, times 2 plus 4x times 3. Now you need to go back to your order of operations a little bit. 
you have a plus here, but you've got this multiplication going on. Multiplication always gets done before addition, so let's work on that. For this term, 2 times 3 is 6. x times, you know, nothing here, 1 really, is just x. So you have 6x, right? You're going to add this to whatever you get in this term. 3 times 4 is 12. x is just multiplied by nothing, just 1 here. There's no other x's here to add with the exponent, so the x just comes along for the ride. So we get 6x from this, multiplying the coefficients, we keep the uh, guy. You can, you can think of it as everything being multiplied together. 3 times 2, uh, 3x times 2, multiply the numbers. x is just multiplied by, there's nothing here, there's just a 1, so you can get, 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 get the x there. Here you have 4x times 3 giving us 12x. Now, we have two like terms here. The x's are the same, so this is like terms. We can collect them. 6 plus 12 is 18. 18 what? 18x. It's really, really important that you understand what I'm doing. Play it a few times if you don't quite get it. Um, you can sort of think of this as in a parentheses if it helps you. I didn't write them there because a lot of times on your test you won't have them written there and you need to understand what it means. We evaluate this guy. You can think of this as um, multiplying these exponents. The x, if there's nothing else to multiply by as far as adding exponents, he just comes along for the ride just like before. But you can't just drop them. You can't just get rid of them. Let's keep doing some more problems. I think you'll get the hang of it. Let's say we have 5 times a times 3 minus 2a times 6. So for this first thing, we have 5 times 3 is 15. And a is just hanging out, so we're going to bring him along, a. Because remember, he's multiplied by everything else too, so he's got to stick around. Minus this guy, 2 times 6 is 12. A is in there, so he's got to come along for the ride. He's multiplied by everything else as well. Now we have two like terms. We have A here and A here. So we uh, add these coefficients together. 15 minus 12 is 3A, like that. Okay, now let's say we get into something a little bit similar, but we have some negative signs here. 4N times 4 minus 3N times 3. So we're doing the same thing really. Um, you can sort of think of a parenthesis around this and a parenthesis around this if it helps you because you got this minus sign. You have to do the multiplication first. So we're going to work in here. 4 times 4 is 16 but we have a negative. So negative 16. N comes along for the ride. He's multiplied by everything else too. You can't just drop him. Minus 3 times 3 is 9 N. He doesn't just drop away because he's also involved as well. Now we have like terms. We can collect them. Negative 16 minus 9 uh, is going to be negative 25. 25 what? 25 n because that like term is hanging out there. So negative 25 times n. Now let's say I have negative, open parentheses, negative 2x squared minus x. And I want to do that. Now inside of the parentheses, which usually is what you do first, you have an x squared and you have an x, and they're added, or in this case, they're subtracted. You can't really do anything inside of there to make it any simpler because you have a x squared and you have x. These are not like terms, so you can't add them. But I can distribute the, the negative 1 into here and the negative 1 over like this. So what I'll get is negative times negative gives me positive 2x squared. Negative times negative gives me positive x. And that's all you can do. You can't really do anything more than keep it as 2x squared plus x because these are not like terms, so I cannot add them together. So it's really important to keep straight about the like terms uh, and so on. So what if you have 3x squared minus 2x squared plus 6? Same sort of deal going on. You want to see if you can collect like terms, but before you can do that, you need to multiply this guy in here. So we're really multiplying these guys together. So we're going to take 3x squared. Negative times 2x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative times 6 is negative 6. Now we look for like terms. We have x squareds here and x squareds here. 3 minus 2 is 1x squared minus 6. And that's the answer. We can't do anything more with this because they're totally different. And they're not like terms at all. Now, what if we have 2 on the outside of a parentheses, 3x plus 5? Up until now, we've just had negative 1 out there, but it doesn't matter what number is on the outside of this parentheses. You can multiply and distribute it in to each term. And that's how you're supposed to handle it. So, 
2 times 3 is 6. X has to stick around because he's multiplied with everything else in this little multiplication going on. Plus, 2 times 5 is 10. Now, you might be tempted to add these together, but you can't because they're not like terms. So you just, just circle that as your answer. Now, what if I have negative 2 on the outside of parentheses? 5 minus 3X. All right, so then I'm going to distribute this in. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Negative 2 times negative 3x is positive 6x. Okay, positive 6x. And again, you might want to add these together, but you can't do that because they're not like terms. Now, what if you have negative 4 on the outside of 3a plus 5? You'll distribute the negative 4 in. Negative 4 times 3a is negative 12a. You multiply the numbers. The variable is coming along because he's also multiplied. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. So he just sticks around like that. Negative 20. It's very much something that once you understand the rule, it will become easier and easier every time you use it. But if you just sort of don't quite understand what you're doing and just work one or two problems, then you're going to not do very well at all because it won't make any sense to you. Now let's look at something a little different. What if you have 5x on the outside of a parentheses? 3x minus 6 on the inside. Obviously, you can't add these together, so you just need to, to back away from that. But you can distribute this whole thing. The whole thing is sitting outside here. So this whole thing gets distributed in term by term. And so think about this. Let's write it out. Let's make sure we're, we're clear. What we're going to have is 5x times 3x from this multiplication. Then we're going to have a minus sign because of this, 5x times 6 just to write it out and make sure everyone's totally clear. That's what we do when we, when we distribute. 5 times 3 is 15. x times x is going to give us x squared because we add the exponents. And then over here, minus 5 times 6 is 30. The variable x just comes down because he's multiplied, but he, you know, there's really nothing else to do. So 15x squared uh, minus 30x. What if we have k times k minus 1? We just distribute the k in. Notice this is a variable on the outside of the parentheses. It doesn't matter what's on the outside of the parentheses. It follows the same rule of distribution. k times k gives us k squared because we add the exponents. k times negative 1, don't forget our minus sign, is negative k. So I have k squared minus k. Now you might be tempted to try to add those, but you can't because this is a different type of term. It's not like terms. All right. What if you had, let's mix it up a little bit, and let's say we have different kinds of variables. 3x times y minus 9z. So now we have x, y, and z, but don't get too frightened by it because it's going to be exactly the same thing. This multiplication, we're going to take this guy and we're going to distribute it in here, and we're going to distribute him here. So distribute him in both places. So 3x times y is just going to be written as 3 times x times y. There's nothing more you can do here. You can't add, you know, add any exponents or anything because these are different variables. Now, minus sign from the middle, 3x times this, 3 times 9 is 27, x times z. You can't really do anything more with that because those are different variables. That's the answer. 3 times x times y minus 27x times z. Now, what if you have 2x negative y plus x. Can't do anything on the inside, so just work on distributing it. 2x times this is going to give us, uh, the negative sign comes out, so negative 2 times x times y. That's this multiplication. The negative comes out 2 times x times y. Then we have plus 2 times x times x. So 2x times x gives us x squared. 2 times x gives us x squared. Because the 2 comes down here, x times x, add the exponents, gives us x, or x squared. Now let's check this out. If I have a number on the outside, then I'll have x squared minus 4x minus 6. So here I have a three-term expression on the inside of the parentheses. And when you're doing uh, distribution, it doesn't matter what's inside here. The 3 gets distributed into every one of these terms, no matter if there's a 100 terms on the inside or a million terms on the inside. This guy gets multiplied by every one. So 3 times x squared is going to give you 3x squared. Can't do much more than that. 3 times 4 is going to give you 12. Negative comes down. 12 
Don't forget the x because you have an x in there that's still multiplied. 3 times 6 is 18, but it's going to be negative 18 because of this guy. So you have 3x squared minus 12x minus 18. Now, moving right along, what if we have negative 5 times 2a squared plus 3a minus 7, like that. Same sort of thing. I'm just giving you some practice. This 5 is going to get multiplied by every term you have. So this guy multiplied together. 2 times 5 is 10, but don't forget your negative, so you have 10. a squared is going to come along because he's still multiplied, but I can't really do anything with it. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Don't forget your a because he's coming along. Negative 5 times negative 7 is positive 35. So he's going to stay like that. So negative 10a squared minus 15a plus 35. Now what if you have 3y on the outside of 2y squared minus y plus 6? And so you're going to do the same thing. You're going to multiply this term by term. So let's work right here. 2 times 3 is going to be 6. y times y squared. I have the same variable, but I'm going to add the exponent, so I'm going to get a 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. Then, negative from here, 3y times this guy is going to give me 3. y times y is going to give me y squared. Then I have this times this. 6 times 3 is uh, 18. 18, y is just going to hang around because he's still multiplied by everything. So you get 6y cubed minus 3y squared plus 18y. All right, now what if you have, uh, let's say you have negative a, and on the inside you have a minus b plus c. So there's no numbers really here other than what's in the implied ones, but you're going to do the same thing. You're going to multiply term by term. So what we have is negative a times a is going to give us negative a squared. We add the exponents, 1 plus 1 is 2. Then. Negative times negative is positive. A times B, you just write as AB. You can't do anything more there. Then you have negative times positive is negative. A times C is going to be A times C. And that's it. A squared plus AB minus AC. Now you might be tempted to try to, to suck these together, but none of these are like terms. AB is different than AC. That's different than A squared, so you cannot just add those anymore. Now what if we have 5x squared minus 4, and then we have 2 minus 2x two squared, right? So what we have here is, this guy out here we want to do something with, but we need to deal with this parentheses here. But on the inside, you can't really add them because they're not like terms. So we're going to distribute this 4 in to both sets of those terms. So we'll have 5x squared, then negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, Negative 4 times negative 2x squared, we have negative times negative is positive. 4 times 2 is 8. And then we have the x squared, which comes along for the ride like that. Now, we're done with the multiplication. We look for like terms. This is a like term with this. So we have 5 plus 8. 5 plus 8 is going to give us 13. x squared comes along for the ride because that's a like term minus the 8 that we had here. So we have 13x squared minus 8. Now, in this section, we've done really important material. All of this material is very important, but the material in this section is very important because when you get down the road, you're going to start multiplying and dividing expressions, and you're going to really need to understand the nuts and bolts of when you add exponents, when you just collect the terms, and so on. So I've tried to give you enough examples to show you what to look for. Basically, when you distribute something in, when you can... Combine exponents, you do it. If you can't, then you just leave it basically alone. When you get down to your final answer, you look for like terms to add together. But the fundamental difference is when you have like terms and you're adding them together, you add those leading numbers and keep, in this case, you keep your x squared or whatever it is you're dealing with along for the ride. When you're multiplying things like this, 4 times 2x squared, you multiply the coefficients and you don't have to have like terms there. Anytime you're multiplying things together, you just do the multiplication um, and just carry it on out. So I've hoped to give you enough examples to show you how to do that. Practice these problems. Work extra problems. Make sure you get it because really this material is very, very crucial. But I have no doubt that you'll understand it. You'll practice the problems. Get your skills up. 
All the topics after this will be cake and uh, you'll be feeling really good about your algebra skills.